Factsverse presents Man Hears Rumor About His Backyard and Starts Digging When you buy a new home, you don't really know much about it, except for what you see. You don't know much about your neighbors or the neighborhood itself, and it's a risk sometimes because you just have no idea what you're in store for. It's kind of a leap of faith whenever you decide to move into a new house. And that's exactly what happened to John Sims. He was ready to buy a new home, and he purchased this really nice house in the suburban area of Tucson, Arizona. The house seemed to have everything John was looking for. Best of all, his friend was the one selling the house. He knew his friend had taken great care of the home over the years, so it sounded like a great idea. When the two men were going through the sale process, his friend told him that there were rumors surrounding the backyard. While John didn't overthink his friend's story at first, he was busy with the details of the sale of the house and just moving in. John's friend told him that he'd heard the rumors, but he never investigated for himself even while he owned the house. When John moved in and got settled, he started thinking about what his friend had told him about the backyard. John was considering investigating the yard himself. His curiosity just got the best of him. John wasn't sure if the rumors were true, but he just had to know. He knew that there was a 50-50 chance that there was something hidden in the backyard. He wasn't sure if it was worth digging up the backyard or not, but as the days passed, his curiosity just wouldn't let it go. He knew he couldn't grab a shovel and start digging. Even though he jokingly asked his friend to borrow a shovel, he knew that it would take a lot more than that to figure out what was below his backyard, if anything. He knew he'd have to have a plan and the right tools. Well, it took John a while to get started on the project, but he never stopped being curious, and he never abandoned the plan. It was just going to take a while longer than expected for John to get the project off the ground. When John was finally ready to start digging, the weather wasn't cooperating with him. Arizona is known for its blistering heat in the summer. The summer John started digging was no different. Despite the heat, John was determined to figure out what was lying under the ground in his backyard. John started digging with just a shovel, and finally his plan was taking shape. John dug for hours, and he didn't find a thing. At first, he thought his friend was just pulling a prank on him. Because his friend knew that he was going to be digging up the yard, though, John was sure he wouldn't have allowed the prank to go that far. He thought maybe he would need something more powerful than a shovel to get to the bottom of this mystery. John was determined to keep digging, and he needed to know for sure if these rumors were true or false. While digging, John came up with a better idea to figure out what was under the backyard. He decided that he would try and find proof that something was under the yard before digging the whole thing up so he went to the town hall to find the municipal records for his Tucson property. It took a while for him to go through all the documents, and finally he found what he was looking for. It was the records of the structure of his house. This was the best clue so far. According to the documents, a company called Whitaker Pools did some building on the property back in 1961. Well, John didn't understand the document. Why would a swimming pool company build something under the ground? John knew that it couldn't have been a swimming pool because he would have seen signs of that while digging. Armed with this information, he wasn't about to stop investigating. He realized after all of his unsuccessful digging that he couldn't get to the bottom of the mystery on his own, so he called in some consultants who were going to use metal detectors to investigate the backyard. With more advanced tools in play now, John was sure he'd finally get to the bottom of this mystery. The first attempt with the metal detectors was a bust. John was really starting to feel disappointed. The team of experts was about to give up when one of the metal detectors finally went off. John was worried it was just a screw or maybe an old coin that was setting off the device. He was afraid to get his hopes up because too many times he had and then it would turn out to be nothing. When the metal detector went off in two different spots, John's faith started to increase. John spray-painted X's on the ground where the detectors went off. That would allow him to search the right areas of the yard things were finally getting real and moving forward now. Armed with this new info, John was determined to figure out what existed under the ground in his yard. He picked up his shovel again and started digging in the area where he painted the X's. When he finally saw something, he wasn't sure whether or not he should stop digging. He thought maybe it was a septic tank under the ground, and digging it up could do more harm than good. After thinking about it, John decided, nah, he's going to keep digging. He'll be careful, but he just couldn't stop now. As he kept digging, he realized the structure was not a septic tank, and things started getting even more interesting. When John dug out the structure, he discovered that it was an entrance to something. Well, now the big question is, what was the entrance to? John knew he had to be careful when he opened the hatch. 
There could have been toxic gas fumes inside which would overcome him in a moment. When John got the courage, he took a peek inside the entrance. When John looked down into the hatch, he saw a very strange spiral inside. After getting a better look, he realized it was a spiral staircase. He was excited to find out whatever it was inside. He knew he had to be smart about it, though. He knew rushing into the hatch would not be safe, so he decided to take a step back and plan his next move carefully. Many other people would have just gone into the hatch blindly. Well, because John was a fire department captain, he was well-trained in rescuing people, and thanks to his experience, he knew how dangerous it could be if he were just to rush down into a hatch that nobody had been in for years. Just by looking at the structure, he knew that it wasn't new. It seemed unstable. The stairs were rusty and sharp. Rather than putting himself in unnecessary danger, he came up with a plan, and he was going to need help with this plan. It was not something that he could do on his own. He decided to ask a few of his friends to come and help him out. He knew it would take an entire team to complete the investigation. Also, if anything went wrong in the hatch, he was really going to have to have some people there standing above to rescue whoever went down. He also knew the lid was heavy and unstable. He'd need help just to get that open. And if the lid were to fall on him, it would surely crush him to death. So with his team in place, John was ready to find out what was inside. Finally. The first step of getting into the hole safely was to reinforce the concrete at the entrance. The heat in Arizona that day was unbearable, but it didn't stop the team from getting the job done. They built a tent over the hole to protect the entrance from direct sunlight. The next task at hand was to install an electric line. The crew wanted to see things clearly, and they didn't trust flashlights. Finally, the men installed a pipe to funnel fresh air into the structure. Finally, it was time to uncover a secret that had been hidden for over 50 years. John knew the stairs leading to the hatch weren't safe. If they collapsed, he could be seriously injured. He knew he couldn't just jump down into the hatch either, because that would lead to a serious injury too. He decided to lower a ladder into the hole, because that would be the safest way in. When he reached the bottom, he found that it was a complex structure. The structure was in pretty good shape, and finally, John knew what it was. It was built during the Cold War, when people were worried about nuclear war. John realized he was standing in a bomb shelter. During the time that the shelter was built, Whitaker Pools expanded their business to start building fallout shelters. John found a manual for the shelter as well as supplies. He realized that he found something special and wanted to restore it to its original state. John set up a GoFundMe and he collected $350, and that got him started. He restored the stairs and finished the work. John managed to bring an incredible piece of history back to life. He says he is thrilled that he never gave up on finding the mystery within his backyard because it was well worth it. Have you ever lived somewhere that had a bomb shelter? Tell us about it in the comments. Help us out by clicking that like button. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos.